I think it's fair to say that the majority of the people who are subscribed to this channel really love animals. And while some of you may be obsessed with plants or fungi, these two kingdoms of life are often overlooked. Most species are stationary, lack personality, and are, unfortunately, often seen as boring. But plants have some incredible ways of thriving, and at times, their adaptations for survival are as amazing as anything you'll find in the animal kingdom. In this week's video, we're taking a look at some of the most amazing plants and revealing the remarkable behaviors they use to bend the rules of nature in their favor. The chances of being struck by lightning over the course of your lifetime are about 1 in 15,000. But in the wet rainforests of the tropics, the chances of being struck are much, much higher. 8 million lightning strikes occur daily, and they have to hit something, with trees taking the majority of the blows. While most of these trees are either heavily damaged or killed, a new study released earlier this year found that at least one species uses lightning to its benefit. In 2016, a team of researchers from the Cary Institute of Ecosystem Studies set out to discover how lightning strikes were affecting trees. They traveled to Barro Colorado Island in Panama, and for nearly four years, they studied trees that were struck by lightning. Through their research, they discovered that one species, the tonka bean tree, actually has a unique relationship with lightning. The long-term study revealed that this species is unusually resistant to lightning strikes. This is because it's particularly good at conducting electricity, a feature that allows the strike to pass more easily through the plant without damaging it. And this can also mean that tonka bean trees attract more lightning strikes than other species. When a tonka bean tree is struck, instead of being killed, several benefits occur. First, the electricity tends to kill about 78% of the parasitic vines on the tree's canopy. This gives the trees more access to sunlight, improving their health. But even more amazingly, the electricity can travel along connected branches and vines, extending the strike's reach into surrounding trees. The team found that each lightning strike on a tonka bean tree killed an average of 9.2 of its neighboring trees. Fewer trees around them also means more access to light, less damage in storms, and a reduction in the number of parasitic vines able to cross from neighboring trees onto the tonka bean trees. By looking back over 40 years of records from the island, it became evident that trees near tonka bean trees were 48% more likely to die than trees growing farther away. For the tonka bean itself, this translates into clear benefits. The team was able to estimate that a single tree's lifetime seed production could be up to 14 times higher than species that do not share its tolerance for lightning. So instead of being a disadvantage, this repeated exposure to lightning strikes appears to strengthen the species' position over time, helping it outcompete its neighbors in one of the most competitive ecosystems on Earth. Strangler figs are some of the most unusual and ruthless plants in the tropics. Unlike most trees, they don't begin their lives rooted in the ground. Their seeds are deposited high in the canopy, usually when a bird or a bat leaves them behind in the crevices of another tree's bark. From this precarious start, the young fig begins sending down slender roots towards the forest floor, while at the same time pushing shoots upward toward the light. As the roots grow longer, they eventually reach the soil and begin to draw up water and nutrients. Over time, they thicken and fuse together into a woody lattice that encloses the trunk of the host tree. This process can take decades, but it steadily squeezes and shades the host until it becomes weakened. With less access to light and resources, the host tree eventually dies. Its wood rots away leaving a hollow central cavity encased in the fig's roots. What began as a single seed in a bird dropping becomes a massive, self-supporting tree that swallows its host whole. This strategy, called hemiepiphytism, 
gives strangler figs a major advantage. By starting life high in the canopy, they bypass the difficult competition on the dark forest floor. At the same time, their aggressive rooting strategy ensures that the plant will ultimately replace its host as an independent tree. While they might seem destructive, strangler figs are a keystone species in many tropical ecosystems. Their fruits are produced year-round and feed hundreds of species of birds, mammals, and insects. Entire food webs rely on the fig's presence. For animals, they're a vital resource, but for other trees, they're one of the most dangerous plants in the forest. The sandbox tree is one of the most dramatic seed dispersers in the plant world. Found in tropical regions of the Americas, this tall rainforest tree has explosive fruits. As the fruit matures and dries, tension builds within its walls until the capsule can no longer hold. When it bursts, the explosion is powerful enough to fling the seeds at speeds approaching 240 kilometers per hour allowing them to make it as far as 60 meters away from their parent tree. The sound is so loud and so powerful, it's been compared to the sound of a gunshot. The sandbox tree's explosive fruit capsules demonstrate a rare evolutionary strategy among plants. Instead of relying on animals, wind, or water for seed dispersal, it's one of only a few species of plant that spreads its seeds through sheer mechanical force. This form of seed dispersal, aptly called ballistic dispersal, ensures that seedlings have a chance to establish themselves far away from the shade of the parent. It also helps the species spread quickly through disturbed areas of forest where sunlight reaches the ground. The tree itself is formidable. The bark is covered in sharp spines, and its sap is highly toxic able to cause severe skin irritation and poisoning if ingested. Because of the combination of its intense seed dispersal and other defenses, it's sometimes called the dynamite tree. In the orchid family, deception is a common theme, but few cases are as striking as those found in certain dendrobium orchids. Many orchid species use pseudocopulation and pseudoprey deception rather than producing nectar, but the dendrobium orchids take it one step further. These plants have evolved to mimic the chemical signals of honeybees. Instead of investing energy into producing nectar to attract pollinators, they release compounds that closely resemble the alarm pheromones produced by bees when they're under attack. The trick works because predatory wasps have learned to home in on those pheromones. In nature, when bees release alarm scents, wasps interpret it as a signal that prey is nearby. As the wasps follow the pheromones hoping to encounter a meal, they're instead led directly to the orchid's open flower. Once there, instead of encountering a bee to eat, the wasp makes contact with the orchid's reproductive structures. Pollen packets stick to their bodies, which they then carry on to the next flower that they investigate, again lured in by the orchid's trick. This strategy is a form of chemical mimicry and is one of the few examples of a plant mimicking pheromones. For the orchid, the payoff is pollination, but for the wasps, it's nothing but wasted energy. Hydnora africana is one of the strangest plants in the world. Native to southern Africa, it spends almost its entire life underground. Because of this subterranean lifestyle, it's lost the ability to produce leaves, stems, or even chlorophyll. As a result, it can't make its own food, so it survives as a parasite, drawing nutrients from the roots of other plants, much like many species of fungus do. Most of the time, it remains completely out of sight under the forest floor, but when the time is right, it pushes up a single fleshy flower that breaks through the soil. The flower is thick, leathery, and looks like something out of a science fiction movie. And instead of smelling sweet, it produces a strong odor that smells like dung, 
perfectly suited to attract its main pollinators, carrion beetles. When a beetle enters the flower, it becomes trapped by stiff bristles that prevent it from escaping. Inside, the insect is dusted with pollen as it moves around. The beetles remain stuck there for several days, and when the flower is ready, the bristles finally relax and release the beetles covered in pollen. Thankfully, the beetles don't have good long-term memories, and many will fly directly to another Hydnora africana flower, carrying the pollen with them and completing the pollination process. Boquilla trifoliolata is a climbing vine from Chile and Argentina with one of the most mysterious behaviors in the plant kingdom. Unlike most plants which have leaves that grow in predictable patterns, Boquilla trifoliolata has the ability to change the shape, size, and even the color of its leaves to match the plant that it's growing on. If it climbs onto a tree with large round leaves, Boquilla trifoliolata's leaves will enlarge and round out to blend in. On a host with narrow pointed leaves, its own leaves will become slender and sharp. In some cases, it's even been recorded mimicking the serrated edges of some species, or copying multiple leaf shapes at once when growing across several different hosts. The behavior was first documented in 2013, and researchers have yet to fully explain how it works. Unlike other forms of mimicry in nature, Boquilla trifoliolata has no physical connection to the host plant. It doesn't graft onto the leaves or exchange tissue. So the leading theories suggest that it might be sensing chemical signals in the air, or even using bacterial intermediaries. But for now, the mystery remains unsolved. What's clear is that this mimicry gives Boquilla trifoliolata an advantage. By blending in with its host, it may reduce the chance of being eaten by herbivores, effectively hiding in plain sight. It's the only known plant capable of imitating such a wide range of leaf forms, making it one of the strangest examples of mimicry in the natural world. Corn is one of the most widespread crops on Earth and easily recognizable. Almost everyone has seen an ear of corn, but it may surprise you to learn that despite the fact that corn doesn't have ears like an animal, it can actually listen. This tall species of grass has the remarkable ability to detect the sound of its predators. When caterpillars begin chewing on a corn leaf, the vibrations created by that chewing trigger a defensive response in the plant. Within hours, the corn releases a cocktail of volatile chemicals into the air. These chemicals don't just make the plant less palatable to the caterpillar, but they act as a signal to attract parasitic wasps. The wasps arrive, lay their eggs inside the caterpillars, and ultimately kill them, protecting the corn plant in the process. What makes this especially remarkable is that the response depends on sound. Experiments have shown that when recordings of caterpillars chewing are played back to the corn plants, they still release these defensive chemicals, even without any insect present. But when exposed to random noises or to vibrations from non-threatening sources, the plants feel no need to respond. So somehow, corn can distinguish the specific vibrations of a herbivore's jaws from all the other background noise in its environment. This ability adds to a growing body of evidence that plants are far more perceptive than they appear. And that's it for this week's video. What other amazing plants do you know of? Let me know in the comments below. I need to say a special thanks to my patrons. Without their ongoing support, I wouldn't be able to make a video like this every week. If you want to support the channel, consider joining us on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Or consider becoming a member here on YouTube by hitting the join button below the video. Members get access to exclusive perks like early video releases, special badges, and custom emojis to use in comments. Your support helps me keep making the best content that I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.